Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy here, Jamelli, and we're back with another shifty video today. Um, today we'll be going over strengthening your weak hand or opposite hand in basketball. Um, I know a lot of players want to develop their weak hand, and of course, would like to use it to their skill set and their daily, of course, advantages against other players to make them seem like they're ball dominant with both hands. So we're pretty much going to get into that. Um, just FYI, we have to get into the actual brain categorization and how development works with that category. Um, what I mean by that is pretty much you have to do daily things in your life in order to incorporate, of course, the left hand or your opposite hand in basketball. If you're not doing simple things like actually using it for a daily purpose, then there's actually no point of trying to work on it. No matter how many drills you do, it's just not going to work. Um, but just do simple things. You could do texting, um, answering the phone, grabbing bags, you know, just simple things with the left hand to kind of get your body used to that motion and actually trying to use that opposite hand first before your actual dominant hand. The more you use your opposite hand and apply it to, of course, your daily drills, you'll start to see yourself just naturally start to go left. Um, but anyway, we're going to get into the first drill and let's hop into it. Alright, so now we're about to hop into the first drill. Um, First drill we'll be doing is V dribbles. All right. Um, I know this is mainly used for stationary, of course, like this, stationary ball handling, but we'll be using it for motion. You can use it for movement and you can use it for stationary. A lot of players use stationary, but I feel like it's not actually getting them involved in in-game situations because they're not incorporating any type of movement. So I would say just make sure that you are you are incorporating movement in your stationary drills. You could do stationary drills with anything between the legs, behind the back, but just always make sure you're throwing a little bit of movement in it because that is very important. Um, it kind of separates the way you dribble and understand the levitation of the ball while you're moving versus stationary. Stationary is great for ball levitation and understanding the feel of the ball when your body is at different levels, but incorporating movement as well will also have you a very shifty player as well because movement is what we use in game. All right, so anyway, first drill is the V, drill, uh, v dribbles, and pretty much we're basically gonna just get into it, all right? Um, you're gonna basically, of course, use your uh, weak hand or opposite hand, and pretty much you're gonna put your dominant hand behind your back, no cheating, and make sure you're going forward and backwards. You can start stationary if you want to, and make it more difficult for you, for my stationary ball handlers, and then move forward and backwards, but I would just recommend movement and maybe stationary at the end, or you could just do a separate drill with stationary and then movement. But anyway, we're gonna get into the drill. Let's get into it. Now, you have to make sure you're getting the ball across your body. If not, you're cheating. Just wanna let you know, don't be like this. Yes, that's okay, but make sure that you're actually understanding you have to get the ball across your body. This is just a little beginner slash burner drill that you could use just to get your hand accustomed to actually using it. The reason why I say this is a beginner one is because your hand is actually catching the ball while it's going the opposite way. So it's really just playing a catch-up game. It's not really working on anything exclusive. This is just a burner drill just to get your opposite hand used to the burning feel um of course because if you don't necessarily use it you need to understand that muscle has to be worked um in some type of way and it has to have some type of feeling in order for it to grow and develop all right so that will be the end of the first drill you just want to do three four three backwards of course and of course that would be one set so once you go forward and backwards that's one and you just continue to three um also if you guys want to you can incorporate this um, for my stationary guys, you could go like this to like 15. Then you can go for it. All right. Ah, man. But yeah, then you could go for it. Y'all see, I was trying to get, I was trying to get jiggy. Uh, let me show y'all what I was trying to do though. 
honestly. Hold on, man, I'm looking crazy. That's what I was trying to do. Well, all right, guys, we're gonna get into the second drill. Hopefully you guys like the first one. First one is pretty easy, just the burner drill, kind of get you guys accustomed to the feeling of using the opposite hand. Let's get into the next one. Okay, now this next one is gonna be a little bit difficult. Um, it's something that I kind of invented myself for understanding how to chop your feet and work on ball control. So this might be something you guys have probably never seen before. And if you guys do know, you can incorporate this with your strong hand and weak hand because I guarantee you probably have never done this before. So you can use both hands on this point, all right? So pretty much what you'll be doing is, you'll be doing it between the legs, but the same way you was catching it in the V dribble, it's the same way you'll catch it before it gets underneath the leg. So I'm explaining to you guys what I mean. So you're gonna get in your lowest stance, and you're gonna go like this. With the same hand. You can do the stationary too. Now, I know a lot of questions are like, okay, and what exactly is that working on? Okay, so if you guys do know, when your body's at different levitations, the ball sometimes spins differently, and sometimes your body just has to get accustomed to the movement of the ball, right? So pretty much what we're doing is we're pretty much incorporating something different that your brain would honestly remember to pretty much understand that any dribble move you do, you will be able to go between the legs because this move is more difficult than basically any between the leg move. So if you're able to catch, catch the ball while it's actually going underneath your leg, you will have a whole bunch of accountabilities to do different moves out of a between the legs that is way more difficult than this move. Only reason we're doing that is for your body to get accustomed to the ball actually getting that low and actually being able to catch the ball, all right? So if you're, say for example, you're going like this and now you gotta get all the way down that's exactly what's gonna happen. You're gonna lose the ball. So, hold on guys. So we're pretty much just trying to get accustomed to when we do have to get down there, our body is already accustomed to what we have to do. Okay? All right, so how we're gonna do this drill is we're gonna go stationary and then movement, okay? So this drill will be a stationary and movement drill, all right? Remember how I said the first drill pure station uh pure movement but you can incorporate stationary this one would be stationary and then movement the reason why is because we're only working on the development of our brain and our body understanding the mechanics of actually grabbing the ball from the lowest point all right so that's this pretty much is working on the mental standpoint and pretty much getting a brief understanding of how the ball reacts and how our body reacts to that position all right so we're gonna come here okay and we're pretty much Gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then on the last one, you're gonna actually do it between the legs and see your lowest point, all right? So you got three sets of this, and then your between the legs will be forward and backwards, all right? Now remember I said, the more we get into different workouts, it gets more difficult. The first one was beginning. This one I feel is, you know, it's, it's a little difficult, but the between the legs will make you, you know, pay up for the hard work you're doing, so. All right, anyway, let's get into the drill. All right, so let's get into it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Oh, now count. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you go right back to it. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Almost got me. Last one. One, two, three, nope, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep it. I know I made the drill look easy. It's really not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, all this will just come with time. I know you guys will probably be confused on, of course, how to actually catch the ball. What I usually say is start slow, all right? Uh, go with a flat ball first. Always use flat balls first. I always recommend to kind of know where to angle your hand and the ball, all right? But anyway, that's the second drill. Now we're gonna get into the third one and I may include an exclusive one. All right, so for this next one, this one will be stationary. Okay, so pretty much you're gonna have your back on the wall. All right, remember we're working on the offhand. So we're gonna start here first, then we're gonna go around and back around again. Then we're gonna go this way and back this way. All right, so you're pretty much trying to make a beat, all different angles. All right, and you got three sets. All right, set, go. Now we're on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, this one gets difficult. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. First set. <laughs> One, two, three. Four, five, six. This will be the last drill, guys. Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's getting difficult. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Last set, guys. One, two, three, four. I'm in so much pain right now, guys. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 
in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, wow. Eight. Thing went all the way over there. Nine. One more. Ah, ten. Let's go. Woo. What? Great workout. Anyway, we're going to flip the camera out of the way. Give me a second. Well, guys, and that's how you... Well, guys, and that's how you develop uh, working on your offhand or weekend. Remember... What I did say at the beginning, the most important tip, rule number one, is to make sure that you are doing daily activities that involves you using your left hand, okay? Uh, sometimes I'll be on the phone with my left hand, I text more with my left hand. You have to incorporate a lot of different things that you do throughout your daily life to just get better in anything you wanna do. Remember, everything is mental and it works with what the brain knows, all right? If you are a person that only use your right hand to eat, sleep, and then, of course, other daily activities, write, you know, anything, you always focus on your right hand first. Then the development, it don't matter how many times you dribble with your left hand in basketball, you will dribble with your left hand, but you will never go left. The reason why, because you have to unlock some type of chamber, I don't know, on this side of the brain that basically develops movements and basically footwork and variations to actually use this side of the body all right it's like you only unlock this side because you only do so much with it that you never use this side to actually unlock your full potential always remember that all right so you have to understand everything that we do applies to our daily life all right um and just understanding the mental standpoint of how things work on our body and of course and anything you want to be good at, you have to understand daily use of your left hand will, or your opposite hand, I'm sorry, your opposite hand is right hand, but your left hand or right hand, using it, using your opposite side will unlock something for you in basketball. It was just, I never really thought about it like that until I started using my left hand more. And then I started seeing how my body would just naturally just go left. Like I'm not even doing drills sometimes and I'm just, my body just, all right, cool. I'm gonna just go left today is because you have to develop that muscle and understand the footwork of actually going left, okay? You could do drills, but I'm just saying, remember, the drills can only do so much. It's all about what you do daily, right? That really gets the development of the body. All right, anyway, guys, I'm gonna just go and stick with those three workouts. I feel like the third one was the most exclusive. That's a secret workout that I really don't, you know, <laughs> give out to people. Um, the reason why is because that last workout was working on three different things, working on eye movement, um, body levitation, and understanding how to actually get the ball across your body and keeping the ball control. So you're working on three different aspects in one drill, all right? And also you're working on, of course, your quads as well, and your hamstrings just sitting on the wall. Um, and it's also a great drill to kind of get you develop me strong. All right, don't just think all these drills are just, you know, gonna make you a developably strong basketball player. You have to actually do physical work, like push-ups, sit-ups, uh, run a lot of cardio. I love running and I love doing push-ups. That's like my top two tiers. Um, I love doing squats too. All right, so always remember, everything you do does apply to becoming a better basketball player. You don't necessarily have to play basketball every day, but you have to do something to get better toward it. All right. But anyway, guys, that's it, man. I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope these three drills helped you out. And especially the weekend, man. It's very annoying. Working on it, man. It's, it's a pain. Um, but, you know, we're trying to get better. Anyway, guys, always remember, you always want to leave something as a... a mer <laughs> you always want to leave something as a memorization for somebody to remember you as. 
I always want to be a positive way or just good deed. Um, everything we do every day applies to somebody's life and it develops them into becoming who they want to be. I made these videos to pretty much help you guys um, to become who you guys want to be. Um, and that's what I feel like the world is about, which is pretty much being there for people, helping them, and building connections, communications, and developing others. All right. Well, guys, keep chasing your dreams. Be safe. And I appreciate all the love I've been receiving. I forgot I didn't say that at the beginning. You guys have really, really been smashing the subscribe and like button. Um, thank you guys so much, man. I really appreciate all the love I've been getting. Um, it's been crazy, man. Um, I just started one day and I was just like, well, we're going to try and it's doing good so far. So I'm just smiling and keeping my head up. Um, happy to make videos for you guys. Drop down in the comments what you guys would like to learn next. I've seen a lot of videos that I have to make. Of course, if you guys comment, thank you guys for commenting. Now, I appreciate all you guys, man. You guys, please be safe, keep moving, chase your dreams. And never forget, it's either one day or day. Be safe, guys.